Welcome to the World of Art with Paul Creamy. Today we're going to do a series of ocean paintings that I've been doing for a few years. And I'll start with this one. This one's called Poppin Beach in Maine. A friend of mine was in the Coast Guard and uh, there's a facility in, in this area by Popham Beach for the Coast Guard. And he was there for a couple of years and he met somebody in a restaurant and they became husband and wife. And so this particular painting has a lot of feeling for me and my friend David because David's wife died of a heart problem and he took his ashes, her ashes, and poured it on the beach. And he took a photograph of it, of this particular night, and it was like this. And I saw the photograph and I said, I'd love to paint it. And he gave me the photograph and I painted it. So, you know, we never know as an artist what attracts us to a piece of art, but somewhat a story like that was so emotional that you want to be part of it. And so that's why I did this particular painting and it's called Popham Beach. I have seven or eight paintings to show today, so we're going to put them up one at a time. So this one on Popham Beach I'm putting over here and I'll get another one. And a lot of these are Maine. Most of them are Maine. This one here is Penniquit, Maine, over by the Penniquit Lighthouse in Maine. I saw this little tiny house. I said, oh my God, it looked like a midget's house. It looked like something from uh, The Wizard of Oz, a tiny little house stuck on this little rocks. You know, and I have a friend of mine who's a realistic artist, and she said to me, I never knew that you could paint like this. And I said, listen, I went to the museum school. I could paint like anything anybody can paint. You're taught at the museum school how to paint, how to look at your subject matter, how to figure out how everything is going to work. This particular spot intrigued me because it had these rocks coming out in this little tiny house with all of these beautiful trees and then the stuff in the background. I took a photograph of it. I painted from the photograph. I didn't copy the photograph. I, I don't particularly like art that is so copied by photographs that it could be a photograph instead of a painting. I was trained at the museum school to go across the room and look from across the room and go back. In fact, I watched this show on Sunday morning every day, uh, every Sunday, and they had a person from Italy that's an artist and he has a studio and he teaches people how to paint and he was teaching them the way that I was taught at the museum school and I was thrilled to listen to him talk because it brought back a lot of memories. So I got this little tiny house and I figured oh my god there must be tiny people in it but you know something because I was so far away it probably is a lot bigger when you get closer but this is Penniquit, Maine near the lighthouse. As you can tell, I have a whole bunch of paintings from Maine, so that gives you some idea of how I feel about Maine. And every time I went to Maine and made a turn, I'd take my camera and take pictures. You can never get enough of Maine when you're up there riding around. There's so much to see and so much to look at, and you want to stop and take a picture and meditate and sit down and enjoy the sight. This is a little island and all of these rocks and all of the stuff around it in the water. And I said, oh boy, I got to take a picture of this. And I, I, and I said, I'm going to paint it. And I like painting rocks. A lot of artists don't like to paint rocks. They, they find it difficult. I say you're putting too much pressure on yourself. Just paint them. You know, it's like everything in life. You keep on saying, oh, I, can't, I don't know if I'm going to do this. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Nothing ever gets done. Art is the act of doing. You, you focus on what you're going to do and you do it. And you become so good at it after a while that people are amazed that you can paint rocks like this. And because rocks are so beautiful. And in Maine, the whole state is filled with rocks. Even some of the people, I'm sure. Well, let me get the one that I think that... 
Yeah, here it is. This is the one my friend likes the most. And it's Brooklyn, Maine. And I was overwhelmed when I saw Brooklyn, Maine the first time. I get out of the car with my friend Dave. We're riding around taking photographs. And I walk down to the beach and there's this trees on, on the corner of this little beach with this pied pool. And I'm saying to myself, I feel like I'm in Japan. It gave me this amazing feeling of being in Japan. Even when I'm painting this, I'm thinking the same thought. I like the tide pool in the trees. You know, this got rejected in an art show in Pembroke because they said I didn't put the water level on this side of the painting. Come on, they were jealous. Judges are like, you can't imagine what judges are like. I have been doing these art shows my whole life. And sometimes my friends would say to me, if your work is better than this, they'll throw out your work. And it's happened to me quite a few times. And this was one of them. And I say to myself, you know, they must have really been jealous. <laughs> because this has such a personality. The shadowing, the rocks, the water, the, the, the lines around the rocks. All of this stuff is everything that you do in a painting. The sky... It all has a oneness about it. It makes it work. It, it makes you become part of the painting. You look at it and you say, I want to be there. That, that's what I like about what I do. Because I feel like if I paint it, I've been there and I want you to come with me and see it. So this is, like I said, Brooklyn, Maine, on the beach. Forget the name of the beach, but that's where it was. You know, I paint so many of these ocean scenes and water scenes. A lot of them I don't have titles. And some of them, like this particular painting, I have painted out of my imagination. I just wanted to do one one day. And I, I, I wanted to paint a nice, quiet, beautiful, soft beach. And the thing with this was that, you know, I had gotten away from... For two years in my life, I spent nothing but painting on canvases, cloud, cloud paintings. I wanted to get this idea that if you're going to paint a painting with ocean and water and stuff, you want to paint a sky that has something to say and makes you feel like you're present in the painting. You're standing on the beach. The sand has got this nice quietness about it. It's got a little dampness on along the edge of the water, and then back here it's nice and quiet and sandy. I've been on beaches like this, been on beaches like this in Florida or in different places that I've been, and I've never been disappointed going to a beach. They're always so beautiful and the sky's so nice. I mean, St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, a lot of places that I've been with there's been some gorgeous beaches, and I've taken some fabulous photographs. I probably have maybe five or 6,000 photographs. And some days I sit here and I just go through the photographs to pick out something that I might look at and get inspired and want to paint. So if you see all of the softness in the sky and in the, in the softness in the water, it's to give you inner peace. Because I think there's nothing more peaceful than to sit and walk on a beach in a nice summer day Beautiful. You might see something you might like, too, on a summer beach. Oh, this one here is, is Florida. I have a friend that has a, a beautiful condo, and she had a beautiful house in Sarasota, Florida. And... Keys, West Keys, oh, let me try it. I'm trying to think of the name of the beach. It's the greatest sand in all of the world. Every year they have this contest to find out where the best sand is. And it's so yes, so yes the Keys in that particular beach has the greatest and most beautiful sand in all of this world. So 
This particular painting is on the way to see Siesta Keys in Florida, in Sarasota area. And my friend lived there for about, uh, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 years. They had a house. They had a house in Marshfield Hills. They had an office in Naples. They had an office in Norwell. They were great. They were my patrons for like 35 years. And the husband and the wife got divorced. And I became very close to the wife, my patron, and him as my patron. And they'd buy painting and he'd buy a painting and she'd buy a painting. There was a war going on between the two of them and they wound up buying almost 150 paintings over a 30 year span and they all had 50, 75 apiece. It was a nice thing for me to put my kids through college. But every time I went to that beach I said I'm going to do a painting of that and this particular painting you just feel like you, you, you're almost to the beach. You're going to get to that little opening here and go down that little hill in this, this magnificent sand. It doesn't stick to your body. It's incredible. And it's the best sand in all of the world in the beaches. Every year it wins best in sand. So that's the name of this one. Siesta Keys, Best in World Sand. We kind of went through this a little fast, but hey, I have the tendency to little talk a little quick. This particular painting is local. I live in Pembroke, and this particular photograph in painting came from World's End in Hingham. I have painted that three or four different times, and it's intriguing, different times of the year. This happens to be the spring. I've painted it in the fall, and I've painted it in the summer, and, I, and every time I paint it, somebody buys that particular painting. There's something about this area that's so peaceful and serene, and it's funny because I was a hairstylist for like 42 years, and one of my favorite customers was a person that worked in the stock market, and she got bored with it, retired, and became a, a person that's at the gate for the state. Uh, I forget what they call those kind of people, a uh, god or something or whatever. She has the hat on with a uh, very, very fantastic. Every time I went, she'd let me in for free. I didn't want to get her in trouble, so I'm not going to say her name. It's just beautiful, that particular area, and it gets a little tough. In fact, my wife and sister-in-law wanted to go there, and they wouldn't let her in because they weren't from Hingham. They're only letting people from Hingham in when they're going through this time with the stuff that's going on. It's nuts. You know, I think that's a place that should be, it's a, it's a, a national state uh, park. You should be able to go anytime, anywhere to any of these parks without being harassed because you're not from this particular spot. So you get this, and this, this tree was bright yellow, and the, the rocks on the sand, and water and the strand going into the ocean. This is the ocean out here. On the other side, there's a beautiful beach. A lot of people in Hingham go to that beach. We go to that beach, myself and my wife. And my wife really loves it because it's got a lifeguard and it's quiet. Nantasket can get a little too busy. It's too many people at one time or another. So we're doing really well. We're moving right along. This. It shows you that any time you want to paint something, it has a different life, a different time. I've got one more and then I'm done. This painting here, I'm working on, and I've been working on it for a while. I finally finished it. It's kind of large, and I'll put it up for a minute and I'll talk as quickly as I can to get done with this. This one's called The Man on the Rocks in its hull. And it's got this beautiful water and these rocks and he's looking at the weather and he's saying, what a beautiful day. So this is what painting is all about. It's making it a story. You can look at it and you can figure out what's going on and how it's done. And it gives you an 
idea of what an artist is trying to say. I have one more, and it's the final one in that series of The People on the Beach. I haven't quite finished it yet. I've been working on it for about three or four days now, and I've got all of the background on, and, but I haven't got the woman. I want to do the, the woman on the beach. So I want to do the woman on the rocks. I did one, and I, and I wasn't happy with it, so I painted it out. And a friend of mine saw it. I had put it on Instagram. And my, he's a priest friend. And he said, I love that painting of the woman on the beach. And I says, oh, boy, I didn't care for it. So I covered it over. But this is the beginning of it. I've been working on this for a week now. Just the water and the rocks. And then I want to put a figure right in here of a woman standing here and looking out. And then I'll have this series of the, husband, the, the man and the woman standing on the rocks. And you know something, there's something about being in a situation where you're meditating and you're thinking. This is what you really, if you're going to do something nice, go for a walk on the beach with the sand. It's magnificent for your feet and it's just so relaxing and it gives you a, a feeling of being part of what you're existing in, in this world of hectic stuff that's going on. It's nice to be able to get there and when they open the beaches and then my wife and I, we get our sneakers on and we go for a walk on the beach. Thank you. God bless. Good day. <laughs>